What is the only known place on Earth where trees have square trunks? I suspect that most people here in the audience don't know the answer to this question. Let me do a little survey. Raise your hand if you're at least somewhat curious about the answer to this question. Wow, quite a few people. So let's analyze your thoughts for a little bit. Yes, I'm a psychologist. What was going on in your mind when you were thinking about the potential answer? You may have thought about several beautiful parks you visited here in California or in a foreign country. Did you see any trees there that had square trunks? Probably not. But what I'm actually interested in is, how does it feel to be curious about the answer to this question? Take a moment to look inward. How does it feel when searching for the possible answer? It might really bug you that you don't know the answer now. It's this little gap in your knowledge and you have this urge to fill it. It's a little bit like an itch that you really need to scratch. It could also create a positive feeling. It excites you and it's fun to think and to figure out what the answer might be. Maybe you itch to rip your phone out of your pocket right now to look up the answer. Maybe some of you have already. Whatever the precise feeling is that this question triggers in you, if this question really sparks your curiosity, it energizes you to go out and seek more information about it. If you think of it, curiosity is an important factor in our lives all the time. Let's take a look at education. If we are bored in a specific class in school, we all know learning is very difficult. But if a teacher inspires a student's curiosity, learning is so much easier. Why is that? Albert Einstein once said, I have no special talents, I'm only passionately curious. Well, in Einstein's case, maybe this was a little bit of an understatement. Current research, however, does indeed suggest that it's not only intelligence that predicts academic achievement, it's also our intellectual curiosity that predicts success in school. Why is curiosity so important? And how can we harness curiosity in an optimal way in our daily lives? Surprisingly, there's very little research on curiosity, and we don't really know how exactly it affects learning. In our lab, we recently started to ask some of these questions, and I would like to tell you about some of our initial experiments. So, how can you elicit curiosity in a lab? Well, one powerful way to elicit curiosity is via trivia questions, like the one I asked you to think about at the beginning of this talk. When I did my PhD in the United Kingdom, I found out about a British passion, pub quizzes, or trivia nights as a, in a bar, as you call them here in the States. If you've ever been to a trivia night at a bar, you know about the electric current of curiosity that fills the room. But to study curiosity, one cannot simply go and sit in the corner of the bar and observe people while they puzzle over trivia questions. All the drinking, socializing, flirting would get in the way of a scientific approach. Besides, we also wanted to know how curiosity changes the brain. So we had to come up with a way to bring a trivia night inside a brain imaging scanner without the beer, of course, and all the other confounds to come up with a well-controlled lab experiment. So to study curiosity in the lab, we invited healthy individuals to take part in a three-stage experiment when we scanned their brain activity. The study went like this. First, we started with a screening phase in which participants rated how curious they were to learn the answers to a series of trivia questions. In the second phase of the experiment, the learning phase, we scanned participants' brain activity using a technique called functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI for short, while people were exposed to the answers of selected trivia questions. Finally, we gave them a surprise memory test about all the trivia answers they had seen before inside the brain imaging scanner. 
Let's take a closer look now at the learning phase, the critical part of the experiment. Each trial started with a trivia question. We then made participants wait 14 seconds until they saw the answer. This let us look at brain activation when curiosity was elicited but not yet satisfied while they were waiting to see the answer. At the end of the trial, the correct answer was revealed. So let's have a look now what curiosity does to the brain. Our initial finding was that once curiosity was elicited, there was increased activity in two areas of the brain, the midbrain and the nucleus accumbens. Both areas are actually deep down in the brain. So we have to take off some cortical layers in order to see them. Here they are, highlighted in red. In both areas, we found a statistically significant relationship between curiosity and neural activation. As you can see on the right, the more curious somebody was to see the answer to a question, the more their brain activity ramped up in both areas. Importantly, recent studies suggest that these areas are involved when we anticipate rewards like money or food. So think of just picking up your paycheck or seeing a waiter carrying your dessert. What do these findings mean? Curiosity actually recruits the very same brain areas that are involved in tangible extrinsic reward. In other words, a state of curiosity is a state in which you crave and anticipate a cognitive reward, the information you're curious about. As it turns out, the two areas that were activated by curiosity are part of the dopaminergic circuit, also known as the brain's wanting system. In fact, we also found that other areas within the wanting system also were activated by curiosity. I think the term wanting system captures really nicely what curiosity does to our brain. It makes us want more information and it helps us to seek this information. Our second set of questions in our experiment was whether being curious affects learning. More precisely, we really wanted to know whether simply being, being curious affects learning any information. And if so, how and why? I remember one of the first lectures I attended on learning and memory during my undergraduate psychology courses. My professor back then claimed that motivation per se does not influence how well we learn information. It only helps us to sit down on our bottoms and to study. But is that really true? Or does simply being curious actually benefit learning? To test what a curious state does to learning, we added a little tweak to our experiment. In the learning phase, when participants were waiting to see the answer to a question, we showed them a random picture of a neutral face. Later on, during the memory test, we also tested their memory for these unrelated faces. As expected, when people were highly curious to find out an answer to a question, they were better at recalling the answer to that question. However, the surprising finding was to us that also the faces, once curiosity was aroused, aroused the faces were also better remembered that were completely unrelated to the trivia. Again, even the information that was unrelated to what people were curious about was better remembered. Also, when we tested people's memory performance 24 hours later, people still remembered faces better that were seen during a high curiosity state than faces that were seen when they weren't curious. This suggests that curiosity puts the brain in a state that is generally conducive to learning any information. So you could think of curiosity as a vortex that draws in what you're motivated to learn and interested to learn, but it also sucks in a lot of other things around it. 
So why does curiosity benefit learning any information? Our brain imaging findings gave us an answer to that question. Let's take a closer look at two brain areas involved in curiosity and memory. The hippocampus, a critical region in the brain's memory system that is especially important for forming new memories. And the midbrain, an important structure in the brain's wanting system that we've talked about earlier. We found that when curiosity enhanced learning, there was increased activity in both the midbrain and the hippocampus. In addition, curiosity also enhanced communication between both areas. Before, I showed you that curiosity actually recruits the wanting system by itself. Here I've now shown you that curiosity also benefits, um, benefits and drives interactions between the midbrain and the hippocampus. So it almost seems like that the brain's wanting system is warming up the hippocampus to get ready for the learning of upcoming information, regardless of whether this is the information that got you curious in the first place or not. The most apparent implications of our findings are, of course, for education. Think again of the vortex that curiosity creates. If you study a specific subject, like the child here who studies the flower, the curiosity vortex not only helps you to learn the, the information that you're interested about, but it also helps you to learn a lot of other information around it. So when teachers have to convey material that is not of general interest to students, learning could potentially be accelerated if a teacher harnesses the power of a student's curiosity about something that they're naturally motivated to learn. Hopefully, our research inspires more teachers to stimulate curiosity ahead of learning, something many passionate educators have been doing already. Our brain just works better on curiosity. Our findings may apply to any kind of context in which you need to convey information to a person. If you spark a person's curiosity first, this person actually wants to receive the information and is then more likely to retain the information and potentially anything else you want to say to them. So if you are now still dying to know where on earth it is, where trees have square trunks, let me finally satisfy your curiosity. Trees that have square trunks grow in the Antons Valley in Panama. If you were really curious about this question throughout this talk, you are more, now more likely to remember that those trees grow in the Antons Valley in Panama, but hopefully you are also now more likely to remember other information better from this talk. If you ever visit the Antons Valley in Panama, please send me a postcard from there, because I'd love to know how square those trees really are and whether you can still remember from this talk why curiosity is so important. Curiosity energizes us via the brain's wanting system so that we go out and seek new information. And curiosity helps us to make our memories stick. Thank you.